It is finally a new year, 2024, and that means it's time to make a new Lightroom catalog. I actually just had a shoot this morning, even though it's January 2nd. <laughs> I'm hitting the ground running with a shoot this morning, then I'm off to London in actually just a few hours. But uh, because I finished my first shoot of the year, I wanted to import all the photos. And uh, I figured I would just talk you through exactly how I set up a new Lightroom catalog. Um, I have very extensive, much longer, you know, point by point, step by step posts on my Patreon about this, but I figured I could make a general, this is the bare bones, how you should be setting up Lightroom uh, with any catalog that you make so that uh, the performance of Lightroom Classic is uh, always, always fast. So right here, you're looking at my previous ca Lightroom catalog. I use one catalog per year. So this is 2023 with my end of year review post. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, go up to file, new catalog. I name my catalog the year that I'm working in, 2024, create. So it's surprisingly debated whether you should create a new Lightroom catalog per shoot or session, or use one over everything, no matter what year, or use one per year. And my setup is kind of a blend of two of those options. Uh, one is that I have a master epic catalog. It's literally every year that I shoot, I import the previous year's catalogs all together into one massive catalog, which I call the Epic Catalog. It has well over 2 million photos at this point, maybe over 3 million. I haven't even counted or looked. But what I'm gonna do with that 2023 catalog, I'm not gonna show in this video. Uh, essentially, I'm just gonna import it into the Epic Catalog. And then for 2024, I'm gonna use that for any new shoot that I do this year. Uh, the reason that I'm very confident in having this setup is that I keep all of my raw files uh, that are undelivered. So like pending, you know, need to edit and organize and everything for my client delivery. I keep all of those raw files stored locally on my eight terabyte laptop. Of course, I save copies in both the cloud and uh, other external hard drives. Uh, again, I have longer, more detailed posts about how that's all automated for me. But for my you know, main images that I'm working from, my main files, I always save them locally to this machine along with the year's catalog that I'm shooting. And my catalogs often are over a quarter million photos. Performance is definitely not an issue. Uh, so I'm just gonna talk through sort of the big bullet points of what you wanna do. So up here in Lightroom Classic, go to preferences. If if you have a graphics processor and you have a newer M chip uh, Mac, which uh, hopefully you do by now, if not, and you're still running Intel, absolutely it's worth, even the, the first M chip, the M1 is worth upgrading to, but I'm running the M3 Max, which is the newest and fastest. I'm gonna keep that at custom, so just so it's always using the uh, you know maximum GPU uh, support possible. Um, camera raw cache settings, I keep this at five gigabytes, but what I wanna really make sure is that the location of the cache settings is on a local disk. If you are somebody who wants to keep your Lightroom catalog running on an external hard drive, fine, but make sure the, the camera, the cache settings are on uh, somewhere local for sure. I don't care about video cache. This I turn off, the enable hover previews of presets. It can be useful if you go through a lot of presets, I have one that I always use on everything, at least as a starting point. So I don't really need to do that very often. I keep that off so that there's not that little bit of overhead. And then use smart previews instead of originals for editing. That should always be turned on if you're willing to wait for smart previews to render. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Keep that check marked. Generate previews in parallel. That's totally up to you. If you have a very fast machine, I recommend keeping that on. Over here at the presets tab, uh, because like I mentioned earlier, I use one preset per catalog. I'm just gonna select that as what I want applied to everything. Uh, it's a really flexible preset and sometimes, you know, I'll edit things wildly different, but as a starting point, I prefer to never look at my images straight out of camera. I always see them with my baseline starting point preset applied and then tweak from there. Uh, there's all kinds of reasons for that. I'm not gonna get into it. Worth noting, if you have different camera bodies, or maybe you work with second shooters or assistants a lot, you can click this to override the global, you know, this gets applied to everything that's imported option and do a camera specific preset. So if you have one that's tweaked for a certain camera sensor or body, you can select that camera body here and then select a relative preset to that if you want. Pretty cool, I don't bother with it. Okay, then over here at external handling, I always make sure that uh, Photoshop is the most up-to-date version or the beta if you wanna be using that, but I, I like the current version. I typically recommend PSD format, not TIFF. It just is more compatible if you have embedded layers in anything that you might do in Photoshop. Color space, sRGB, please do that. It just makes your life 
so much easier across the board than any of the other color spaces. Bit depth, 16 bits, resolution, 240. Now uh, we're done with that. We're gonna go over to catalog settings. This is where you need to be a little bit more exact in, in what's happening. So under the file handling tab, uh, select that, and then standard preview size. I typically keep it at 2880, but if the auto recommendation isn't too laughably huge, this is a little less than I think half of what my normal resolution size would be, 3024. Um, you can go ahead and select what the auto option is, but I would generally recommend 2880 unless you have a giant, giant screen uh, that you use all the time for editing. Preview quality, set this to high, not medium, and then automatically discard one-on-one -one previews, 30 days, that's fine. Okay, over here at metadata, I like to turn this on. There might be a slight performance hit, automatically write changes into XMP, but it's not so much that I've ever really noticed it anywhere. And what this does is it creates a little sidecar file wherever your raw file sits. And in that sidecar file, it's just text. It keeps all of your uh, relative Lightroom edit information. The reason that's really helpful is if you get a corrupt Lightroom catalog that you didn't back up properly, and based on the most recent updates to Lightroom, I would be very careful about that. I actually did have a corrupt catalog. My backup plan is ironclad and I didn't lose anything, but if you're a little on the fence about whether or not your backup is as solid as you know it should be, Turn on XMP, and what this allows you to do is any new catalog that you make, when you re-import those raw files, it will read from the XMP and reattach those edits that are stored in that sidecar file uh, so that you're not totally starting from scratch again, which is, I think, pretty helpful. Turn off the face detection. That'll be a huge performance hit you'll probably never actually use for any reason. And I think that's about it. Now, one other thing I really like to do is expand the upper menu, right click on these options here, all the different modules, and turn off the ones you're not gonna use uh, just to save like visual clutter. And then over here, what I like to do is create a personalized identity plate that just sort of fills right until it starts to cut off at the very top there. That looks cool. And that's just my the name of my preset that I really like. I'm gonna do that for the other side as well. Choose one of my favorite fonts here. Old. Make that as large as I can before it starts to get cut off. You can really go huge on that side. Okay, we'll go right about there. <laughs> One thing uh, to, again, boost performance. This might seem kind of surprising, but always keep your histogram minimized. If it's not, every time you switch an image, it tries to re-render and analyze the histogram layout. It's, it's a really brief, like quarter second thing, but when you're going really fast, or if you're going really back to back with a whole lot of images, it really it's a really noticeable uh, improvement to turn that off. So I'm gonna go ahead and import my first series of images from this year from my, my memory card. It was just a simple portrait session, nothing uh, too crazy there. Um, I always set build previews to standard, uh, not one-to-one. -one and not embedded to sidecar and not minimal. There's reasons for all of that. Standard is the way to go, in my opinion. Uh, and then build previews, turn that on, yes. Don't import the duplicates, that's good. And then if uh, I don't have right now my external hard drive, but I would normally keep this check mark to make a second copy of everything that I import. Uh, that's one of like five copies that I <laughs> make in my whole process. Under file renaming, this is pretty useful. So uh, I have a little template. Uh, you can click on that and hit edit to create your own if you want. Every file that I import into my Lightroom catalog gets renamed to the year, month, day, hour, minute, second that the photo was made at. And if you shoot more than one image per second, which I often do, it automatically adds at the end a uh, you know dash two, dash three, dash four, um, so that you don't ever have any duplicate file names on your system, which is really, really key in having like a sound organized workflow. Uh, so anyway, I highly recommend that and keep it consistent throughout the entire year. Apply during import, uh, that's already sort of taken care of from the previous part. If you wanted to choose something you know, a la carte for this particular shoot, you could do that here. Keywords is where I do the heavy lifting of how I organize things. So this is gonna say National Press Club, which is the venue location. Uh, Emily, don't know her last name, president of the press club, Washington, DC. So the keywords box is where I keep any and all sort of identifying information so that throughout the course of the entire year, I can select all images and do a keyword search for something that, you know, the venue name or whatever I can think of that is likely to, you know, surface the result that I'm looking for. Keeps it really easy. Uh, and then down here under destination, this is the main root folder that uh, everything is stored in. And I'm gonna create a new one since it's a new year called In Progress 2024. And then within that, it's gonna keep everything that I import uh, throughout this whole year in a separate dated folder. If I shoot more than one event in a day, I will just 
import like this and then manually add like dash two, dash three, something like that. Uh, so that every event kind of has its own separate folder, but still I usually don't shoot more than one event in a day and I can keep everything in one dated folder automatically. Uh, this is just saved in the pictures folder of my local hard drive, nothing crazy there. And boom, that's it. I can start the import process, let everything render. Uh, because I prefer to see my Lightroom preset applied to everything, it will require the time, the rendering time to create smart previews and standard previews where where that is applied automatically. The last thing I'm gonna do is set up my PickTime plugin, uh, which is so handy. It's the, PickTime is the company I use to host all of my client galleries that get delivered. And what's really cool about their system is that they have a built-in native Lightroom plugin that lets you upload to their servers without having to leave Lightroom for any reason. So I'm gonna enter my PickTime account credentials. I upload at JPEG quality 85, resize to fit on the long edge, 5,000 pixels which is more than enough for anything clients are gonna to need to print from. 240 pixels per inch, sharpen for screen standard with all metadata. So I'm gonna save that information. Then I'm gonna go back here to the uh, plugin module and right click edit settings. I'm gonna scroll down here, file naming I don't care about, but here, the export backup copy, this is really key. Uh, basically what this does is any image that gets converted to a JPEG and uploaded to PickTime servers in your client gallery, any of those, you can have a duplicate copy automatically made. And I just choose a folder in my Dropbox account. Uh, it's called PickTime Backups. So I will choose that as my backup folder. Anything that gets exported or re-exported or changed for any reason gets mirrored in what is uploaded to this folder on Dropbox, which is just another cloud backup area for all of my high-res JPEG files. Export settings, 85, long edge, 5,000, da, 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 da. Uh, I have explained this many times why I export at these settings. Uh, again, I have many Patreon posts about that. I'm not gonna get into it for this. Now, I could choose here to sync my client galleries. And what would happen then is I would see over here in the plugin, all of my client galleries organized, but I don't really care about that because that gets absorbed and recreated in my master catalog for the year. All I care about are weddings and events from this year. So I don't sync all my previous uh, galleries. I just leave them as is, uh, hit save, and now I can create a gallery whenever I'm ready to edit and deliver this whole session, which I'm not ready yet. <laughs> that pretty much wraps it up. At this point, everything is pretty rendered. It looks like it's like 90% done, and you can see just how quickly and responsive the, the image switching and everything should be and is for me and my computer. Even in the develop module, I would recommend minimizing your histogram. The library module is always going to be faster than the develop module, so I highly recommend doing all of your culling, meaning your flags or color coding or starring, do that in the library module. After you've done all that work, the develop module is where you should do all of your edits. So that's it. Hopefully uh, I've reminded you if you had forgotten to go ahead and make a new catalog for the year. Can't tell you how many times I've forgotten to do that and I import and I've got like two weeks of the start of every year and the year before it's catalog, which just drives me crazy. But if you have any questions, let me know. Hope you found this helpful. Much more detailed and extensive uh, how I back up everything to both the local and the cloud in five or six different spots, uh, completely automated, and how I optimize just other aspects of using Lightroom so that edits are insanely fast, all available on my Patreon and older posts. But if you have any questions specific to this post, please let me know. I hope everybody had a happy new year. And as always, thank you so much for your attention. I'll be back soon. Bye everyone.